Hello E32 fans, I hope you are doing well. I am doing excellent. I'm ready to uh, do another project on my uh, BMW. Uh, and um, in this video, I'll be replacing the uh, accumulators of the self-leveling suspension system. The reason for that is, or like other videos say, the customer complaint, I'm the customer. Uh, the complaint is the rear is bouncy uh, and the uh, suspension is really harsh at the back. Uh, it's stiff uh, and not comfortable. Uh, the front is okay, but uh, the rear is still really stiff. Here's my car from one of my previous videos uh, where I go over a bump. And uh, you can see where I hit the, the bump. Uh, it rebounds once, which is normal, but then it keeps bouncing uh, again and again and again. This is what I'm trying to fix uh, by changing the accumulators. And uh, this applies to the, uh, you know, all the IL versions of the E32. So uh, 735 IL, 740 IL, 750 IL. Uh, yeah, and it also applies to the E34 M5 and also the E34 Tourings, I believe, have a similar or this exact setup, uh, same setup. A bit of technical background on uh, why the ride is bouncy uh, when these fail. So there is a diaphragm, a rubber diaphragm over here, and which separates uh, the accumulator into two uh, sealed section. So one is uh, with nitrogen, one is filled with nitrogen, the other is filled with uh, pentacene or uh, you know this uh, this oil, just basically hy uh, hydraulic fluid. And uh, the the nitrogen acts as a shock absorber. So when the oil pushes um, uh, on the nitrogen, it acts uh, as a cushion and it uh, provides a uh, a nice ride at the back. But what happens is that uh, two things can happen. So the the rubber uh, diaphragm can rupture, uh, and uh, then you have uh, all the oil uh, going into uh, this uh, upper section, uh, the upper chamber, and then you get no uh, no, no no more shock uh, absorption because you are basically riding on the hydraulic fluid and it can't be compressed. So uh, it's a really stiff ride. Uh, or the nitrogen can also just escape naturally over time, and uh, that happens as well. Um, so uh, yeah, so you really need to uh, replace these. Uh, fairly regularly. I mean, they, they, they are a service item. They're not something that you can, you know, just uh, forget uh, and uh, think that, you know, my car will last forever. No, you need to, uh, uh, they're like brakes or other service items, you know, 80, 80 to 100,000 uh, uh, kilometers is about the life you can expect out of them. So uh, yeah, you need to replace them eventually. If your car is uh, old and, uh, you know, just like mine, and it's never been done, for sure you need to replace these. They're not that expensive. They were about 130 each, 150 Canadian, something like that. They are made in Germany by uh, uh, Febi Bilstein, I think. Yeah, so uh, yeah, a really good part. I think they're exactly the same thing that uh, BMW sells at the dealership. Ah, yes, I forgot to mention that I also got this uh, small uh, uh, vice grip. I thought it was bigger, but on the picture, uh, it, you could not really see the scale but it's really tiny look at that in my hand uh, it's made by vice grip uh, classic brand so what it does is that it holds uh, fasteners on three sides yeah you can see that it grips all three sides so when you're dealing with uh, flare nuts and uh, critical um, fasteners like this uh, this comes in handy yeah so let's get started and uh, I already uh, jacked up the car and uh, let's take a look all right, so like I said, the car is jacked. I got uh, some uh, wheel chucks uh, over here to hold the car because, you know, there's no parking brake at the front, of course. Uh, so this is the, the area we'll be working in. Um, you can see the, the accumulator here. And I'm starting on the right side because uh, the, there's no exhaust on this side, of course, and uh, there's no uh, heat shield uh, either. So it makes it uh, a bit easier uh, for the first time. Uh, to be honest, uh, I did record uh, yesterday, uh, two days ago, um, I, I recorded myself uh, using uh, my uh, vice grip and a hammer and everything to get uh, this, uh, uh, this nut uh, started, but it would not move at all. Um, so the thing is that I applied um, uh, penetrating oil uh, before I brushed all the areas with uh, uh, my uh, uh, my big brushes like this metal brushes and uh, I think uh, the dust and the dirt might have absorbed the penetrating oil so I reapplied it waited two days and uh, now I'll try again and uh, see if I have uh, better success because I was turning it and it wouldn't move at all so uh, let's go ahead and try that yeah I got a pretty good grip on it so let's try to turn it <sighs> Oh man, it's super tight. And I don't like how the bracket is moving like this. 
You see how it moves, it wobbles. I don't want to bend it. I wonder if I can apply, maybe just apply a, a block of wood here with my jack just to hold it because I don't want it to move. Hmm. Okay, I'll try again. Oh man. Okay, so I placed a block of wood sort of uh, preloaded on the accumulator here. So when I turn, it doesn't move as much. Eh, we'll see, maybe it helps, but uh, it gives me a bit more confidence. So, okay, let's try again. Uh, wow. Okay, maybe with a uh, hammer, some impact action. There's not a lot of room to swing a hammer here because of the fuel filter, uh, at least on the M30 engine. Um, yeah. Okay, let's try with a regular 14 millimeter now. Uh, I'm using these uh, right, uh, right grip uh, wrenches. They have some teeth. I don't know if you see them, but uh, yeah, they grab uh, fasteners apparently. So. Uh, they should be good. Yeah, I know I should use a uh, line wrench or a flare wrench, but uh, I don't have one uh, for this size. Okay, so I'll try hitting the bottom, um, the closed end of the wrench with a hammer. Wow, it's, uh, it's like it's welded on there. Okay, so change of plan. Uh, I think I will attack this nut instead because I can really apply leverage on it. You know, it's a part of the strut, so uh, it should not move. And uh, this uh, hose, well, I'll just bring it with me uh, with the accumulator uh, on the bench and attempt to uh, remove it uh, there. But uh, yeah, I don't want to break this bracket, so uh, let's uh, concentrate on this nut instead. Let's try again, 14 millimeter. Wow, it's super tight. Oh, nice. Okay, perfect. Woo. Well, that was quick. So I got this one released. That's excellent. Now I will try the smaller uh, uh, pipe at the back uh, at the accumulator. If I can get both of these uh, released, then uh, we'll make a good progress. The size of the nut on this hard line is a more standard size. Uh, it's uh, 11 millimeters and I have a, a line wrench or a flare nut wrench uh, for that. So hopefully it helps. Uh, you know, it's the kind of thing you'll bust your knuckles if you uh, push too hard. Uh, wow. Another difficult one. Uh, hmm. Hmm, mm, mm. Okay, I'll grab a regular wrench to uh, get more leverage. Okay, so leverage extension activated with this longer wrench. Ah, oh man, yeah, I even made a mark here with the with the wrench. Wow. Okay, my next plan is to use a large wooden block and a and a hammer. To hit it, am I just rounding the nut here, or making progress, or what? Nope, still hard as ever. Hmm. Okay. Let's grab the small vice grip thing. Here goes nothing. Is it rounding? What is it doing? Oh, man. It's turning, but yeah, there's no oil. Am I rounding it? Oh, I do see oil. Yes. Oh, victory. Ah, when you see oil, it means you're not rounding the nut. Okay, so let's remove that. <clears throat> yeah, it's turning. Oh, wonderful. 
Oh man, you don't know how happy I am that this knot is not rounded. I mean, I know you can probably create these lines, maybe out of copper or something, but it's just not fun. If you can avoid it, it's a lot better. So because my accumulators are bad, uh, they must be uh, full of uh, hydraulic fluid. Uh, so there will be quite a lot dripping, uh, I believe. I wonder if I can finish the rest by hand. Oh, yes. Oh, lots of rust. Look at that. Oh, yeah. So it looks like the rust was only on the actual um, flare nut. Okay. I can just leave this hanging there for now. And, uh, yeah, okay. Before removing uh, this uh, nut at the strut, I'll remove um, the bracket that holds uh, the accumulator in place. Uh, you, you can see two bolts there. There's a third one uh, that bolts uh, up into the, the, the body of the car, I believe. So I'll be using this uh, uh, pretty long extension uh, to reach, uh, so you can reach in there fairly well uh, with an extension like this. So. Yeah, so I'll do that and uh, then I'll attack uh, uh, this nut. Oh wait, is there a nut at the back that I need to counter hold? Oh yeah, I think there's a nut there. Okay. Okay, yeah, you definitely need to uh, hold it uh, with a wrench. So it's a 10 millimeter uh, on both sides. I keep hitting my light with the... Oh, there goes my light. Oh, there goes the camera. Okay, I'm back. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, these videos because it adds uh, quite a lot of uh, logistical, uh, how can I say, uh, potential issues. Uh, like, uh, you know, not looking at what I'm doing and looking at the camera instead, things like that. But, you know, I'm really happy to make these videos. I enjoy it. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother with it. There's a washer at the back. Where's the nut though? That's weird. Nah, it was stuck in my wrench. So like I said in my uh, uh, one of my first videos, don't, don't do what I do. Just use this as visual reference, but that's it. Okay, so that's the whole thing here, in case you're wondering. Okay, so there's a the nut again. So I got the washer at the back and the bolt. Okay, so I'm under the car. This is the accumulator here. Let's see where this bolt is. Uh, the last bolt. Oh, okay, yeah, it's right under there. Or rather on top. Ah, all right. Okay, so I need to make sure it doesn't tangle with the... Ah, oil. Uh-oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't wanna... Oh no, it's dripping on my arm. Oh man. All right, so... Oh, okay. Well, that's nice of BMW. They even included a shelf here so you can rest your accumulator when you replace it. How thoughtful of them. Wonderful. I love how clean the body is, like right here. This is like pure, I think, galvanized metal. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay, I'm back from under the car and now I can remove uh, this nut over here. And uh, yeah, oh, let me just place my pan right here, just in case. Uh, well, it's gonna take a while. Ah, perfect. Uh, what? So do I need to... Hmm. Ah, so maybe I should have cleaned uh, the area a bit more um, before removing it, you know, removing all the, the dirt around it. Yeah, at least now uh, the hose is free. Perfect. All right, so if I grab the accumulator, I should be able to put it in the pan. All right. So there it is. Okay, so first accumulator out. Uh, pretty happy with the result. I just need to remove this nut. Uh, but if I put uh, uh, the uh, accumulator in a vise, uh, I should be able to uh, apply a lot of leverage on this nut. So I'm confident uh, I'll be able to remove it and keep uh, the hose.
Hmm. All right, not too bad. All right, success. The hose is out. Yeah, we can clearly see why it was it's so difficult to remove. You can see all the rust. Uh, where it uh, it uh, met with the accumulator. Uh, it's quite rusty in there, but uh, these threads are perfect. So uh, yeah, it's really just uh, these. I read online that there's a good way to check if these are good or bad. Uh, you basically take a uh, poking device and you uh, insert it into the hole here at the top. So if I take a, easy now. So if I take a zip tie that I have and I poke it right there, I can see how far I, it reaches and if it reaches all the way to the back it means that the diaphragm is uh, corrupted or uh, rather uh, ruptured and it no longer provides a, uh, a seal so yeah you can see that the zip tie went all the way down uh, back there so the the diaphragm here is uh, must be torn or something anyway i know for sure that there's no uh, nitrogen here because uh, i would uh, hit some pressure you know and i i could never uh, insert the zip tie all the way so if i take the new one uh over here okay and uh, let me grab my uh, pick tool working with one hand is no good i need a tripod Okay, what is in there? Oh, there's like a green. What is this? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's the diaphragm. Um, I'm not sure. So if I take the um, zip tie again and I try to poke it, it won't go in there. Nope. So it goes, you know, that far. Um, so yeah, so that could be the diaphragm, and the hydraulic pressure applies a, a, a huge force. Um, so it a, uh, it probably pushes the diaphragm uh, up there, and then it settles uh, as it hits uh, the nitrogen. I don't know. So that was a pretty good tip. Uh, it seems to work. Uh, you just uh, poke it, and then you know if it's good or bad. Okay, let's transfer this grommet. There's a sleeve there. I need to push it out first. Okay, so sleeve. Okay. Uh, and the grommet oh, seems to be really tight. Okay, what if I try to push it like this? Ah, yes. Oh, that worked. Okay, so that's the grommet. I'll reuse it because it's uh, nice and soft. So, yeah, good to go. If you were in Quebec, I recommended that I get silicone spray to install uh, rubber bits uh, easier. And uh, he's right, but I did not get around to buying it yet forgot about it all right okay so i think that's uh, good to go let me just double check yeah looks to be installed correctly so the sleeve goes in there like this and then the washer will go there in the car. Okay, good to go. Okay, so off camera I did a bit of cleaning because uh, I didn't like uh, all the dust and dirt uh, all in this area. So I just, you know, cleaned it uh, quickly um, and shot some brake cleaner everywhere. And uh, yeah, and I also cleaned uh, the hose. Let me grab it. So there it is. Uh, I cleaned up pretty well and it's still, uh, you know, Nice and flexible, it's not uh, stiff. So yeah, it doesn't appear that it would crack. Uh, so I think I'm okay to reuse it. And it's good because I did check and uh, these hoses are still available from BMW. Uh, they're around 145 or 150 Canadian uh, each side. So not cheap. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad uh, that I can reuse them. And uh, yeah, and all the fittings, uh, the fittings look good. And uh, I cleaned them using a uh, pretty cool uh, Dremel. It's not a real Dremel, but a similar kind of a tool set that I bought at a, at a yard sale today for like $20. Uh, pretty good deal. So uh, it cleaned up uh, all the, the metal pretty nicely. So, uh, you know, where, where there was uh, a lot of rust, 
Uh, it's mostly gone, so uh, yeah, and it uh, cleaned up the metal, and I cleaned the rubber with a with a rag. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. And I also cleaned uh, at the back here uh, this uh, uh, this fitting uh, at the back. I cleaned all the rust, so it's nice and clean and ready to go. I also cleaned the uh, nuts and bolts uh, using my uh, thread chaser kit over here, just to make sure that everything uh, goes uh, nice and smooth and uh, it threads uh, correctly. So yeah, they're all good to go. Even if there's uh, some remnant of rust, they thread perfectly, so yeah. All right, reinstalling the accumulator. I'll start with the two bolts at the front. And uh, by the way, it really helps if you have a small cap uh, like this on the lines because uh, it keeps dripping. And uh, I forgot the little cap uh, and it dripped quite a lot of fluid overnight uh, on the floor so not not really fun so uh, yeah just make sure to cap these lines so let me just bring the accumulator like this and it goes over these uh, sort of uh, bushings okay like this I'll just start with ball to hold it okay Okay, so the washer goes first at the back, over the bolt, and then the nut. I'll just make them finger tight at first. Okay, this one's done. All right. Okay, so I'm under the car and I positioned you near the trailing arm. Hopefully you can see well. Uh, so when you install the two bolts uh, at the front of the accumulator, the one at the back uh, falls in, in pretty well in, in place. Uh, yeah, okay. So that started it. All right, perfect. Okay, so let's uh, reinstall uh, this uh, lower fitting here in this uh, in this lower port, and uh, it's critical that it's uh, perfectly clean. So uh, I'll use a, a bit of a brake cleaner just to uh, spin it a bit on the um, uh, on the threads. Okay, let's remove the cap. Yeah, in the pan. Oh, nice. Okay, I can remove my cap. Come on, little guy. Come with me. Oh no, in the pan. Anyway, so the port is right here. Okay, let's start to thread it slowly. I don't want to cross thread anything. Yeah, I feel some resistance. I don't like that. Okay, maybe I need to push the pipe because uh, it doesn't feel square with the opening. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you need to apply some pressure uh, in uh, this direction you know, towards the front of the car. And that helps to make the fitting uh, square. And you get less re resistance and binding when turning it. So I'm just wiggling it. And uh, if I recall, the threads did not go all the way into the accumulator. I could see uh, a few threads, I believe, uh, before I removed it. All right, so I think that's as far as I can go with just hand tightening. Okay, let's continue with a wrench now, and I'm pretty confident that it's not cross-threaded because uh, it's uh, pretty far uh, into the accumulator. All right, so that feels secure and nice and tight, but not too tight. You know, I don't want to damage the threads or the accumulator, so. I'll start with this tightness and, uh, you know, if it leaks, I can just uh, tighten it some more, but, you know, I'd rather be on the safe side and uh, be cautious. Okay, now for the hose at the strut. Um, I had to look back uh, at my uh, footage uh, that I, re I recorded because I didn't know how many threads were visible uh, on uh, this uh, fitting. And it's about uh, like one, one and a half uh, thread was visible. So that's good to know because uh, you don't remember these kind of things okay so let's install it like this okay so i can see now that the hose is you know it bottomed out i can 
and start threading it. Okay, so yeah, about one, one and a half threads or two threads. Yeah, that looks good. So I'll just tighten this with a 14 uh, millimeter wrench. Okay, not more than that. I think that's sufficient. So yeah, that's it. Really easy to reinstall. So now we just need to install the one at the back. All right, now for the back connection over here. Um, it's funny because I can see some oil there uh, and it looks like it's dripping from uh, this port over here. Yeah, you can see oil. So I think if uh, I remove the cap, uh, there should be oil pouring out. Okay, so it doesn't quite pour, but uh, I can see some oil there, yeah. So I'll just clean it lightly. And I already cleaned uh, the threads uh, on the actual fitting on the hose. So it should thread really, really easily. Okay, I just need to make sure it's square. Uh, like this. I'll just wiggle it a bit. Oh yeah, when you wiggle it, you get more uh, more threads out of it. Again, 14 millimeters. All right, so it went pretty well, you know, considering uh, it's been uh, rusting, uh, rusting out for 30 years, uh, it's not too bad. So uh, yeah, really happy with the result. Okay, so I wiped everything to monitor for leaks uh, because, uh, you know, if uh, I get a leak, I want to uh, see it right away. So uh, yeah, let's move uh, to the left side now. All right, so the left side. Um, so after a brief inspection, um, I don't spot any major issues on this side. You know, there's the heat shield there by the accumulator and uh, there's a lot less room um, because of the exhaust. You know, working from uh, below to remove the, the top bolt uh, will be a bit challenging. But other than that, it uh, should be straightforward. I'll go with uh, this nut uh, right away. I won't bother with the one at the back. Look how rusty it looks. So that looks pretty mean. I will just remove it uh, on the vise like I did for the right side. So yeah, I want to do a full step-by-step -step, um, uh, video of uh, this uh, left side, uh, but uh, I'll show any noteworthy uh, sections, uh, you know, if there's something uh, important to show. Other than that, I'll just show it uh, quickly. Okay, so I'm going quarter inch uh, for this last bolt because it's extremely tight. Uh, I don't know if you can see it real well, but uh, I tried to, put, to position the camera, but uh, yeah, it's really difficult. Maybe you can see my finger here. Oh, did I crack it? Oh yeah, I did. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, this one's definitely not fun. By the way, the Bentley manual says to drop the exhaust uh, to do this, but uh, you can do it without dropping it. It's just, uh, just tricky to maneuver around it. On the left accumulator, there's a, this sort of plastic shield. Uh, I don't know if it's a heat shield or something, but uh, anyway, you need to remove it uh, before putting the uh, accumulator in a vise. So before that, I need to remove the grommet. So same thing as the right side. It's just a plastic shield, nothing more to it. Wow. Yeah, I'm 
really starting to dig into the the nut here yeah i don't like that mm. all right so the pipe is free finally uh, it's just a uh, the flare nut now that I need to remove but yeah I'm not so sure if I'll be able to uh, reuse uh, this hose because uh, it took a lot of damage uh, when I, uh, I removed it even then it's super super tight and by the way my car was not winter driven I think it was only winter driven for the first one or two years uh, when the first owner had it, but after that garage kept and only kept as a summer car So if you have a, a E32 that has been winter driven Yeah, good luck getting these uh, hoses uh, Removed it's gonna be really difficult and you need a, a good uh, basic equipment like a vice and uh, several wrenches and things like that to give you options Finally, wow, crazy, crazy rust. So let's look at that up close. Look at the condition of the flare nut. It's crazy. Uh, at one point over here, looks like uh, the, the thread is uh, damaged. And uh, for sure, the, the hex head is uh, damage because I had to use uh, so much force and different tools uh, so yeah I'm not too sure if I'll be able to uh, reuse this hose um, I'll try to clean it up and then uh, see uh, the condition uh, after that all right I cleaned up the hose and here are my findings so this uh, pipe fitting over here is uh, quite nice uh, it cleaned up really well the threads are nice and straight and uh, you know all the rust uh, uh, came away and uh, you know look at the, all the six sides over here they look good uh, and uh, the rubber is good as well but uh, this side is uh, problematic because uh, as you can see the hex sides uh, so these uh, things over here are all mangled because it was so difficult to remove and uh, you know I tried to be careful but you know you want to be careful but at the same time you, you have to do the job you have to remove it so you, you need to apply some uh, some leverage and force um, but uh, yeah so I tried to um, file you know all the sides uh, very, very carefully uh, so that um, there is um, you know there are no burrs and uh, things like that uh, I'll try to reinstall the hose and if it doesn't work if I just can't um, tighten it enough uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have to, to replace it but uh, yeah the threads uh, cleaned up really well uh, and uh, no problem there yeah so all in all uh, not bad but you know I really wish I could uh, have removed it uh, easier but yeah can't do more uh, more than that uh, it's uh, you need to work with what you have and the bushing okay ready to go before i reinstall the left side take a look at all the plumbing that involves uh, the uh, self-leveling suspension system so you have a line here then you have a hose over there then there's another hose there's a uh, a coupler here or a valve of, of some kind uh yeah it looks uh, like a really complex system and i'm really hoping i never have to touch any of these uh hoses and lines because yeah it looks to be terrible working in there um yeah so hopefully it just works and these lines never drip and uh i never have to deal with these okay left accumulator going in So I'm under the car, uh, this is the half shaft, the exhaust is right here and um, I just wanted to show how you can reach the, the top uh, bolt here. So if you come down from the exhaust and you use a super long extension, then you have a pretty straight, uh, 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 straight access to this bolt. Um, I think it's easier to do it that way, uh, at least you can see it. 
uh, versus um, doing what I did before, you know, just uh, going just by feel. So um, I think that's a more appropriate uh, solution and it's what I'll be using now. Ah, yeah, you can see how the access is much better that way. Yeah, so I just need to align it and then uh, I'll be able to uh, bolt it in place. So before reinstalling uh, the line fully over here, I was wondering about this, uh, what BMW, BMW calls a protection cap. And I don't remember it being so loose uh, on the old accumulator. I thought it was a pretty, uh, you know, firmly in place. And uh, I'm sure that's going to vibrate as I drive. So I tried to look online for information, but uh, there's nothing that I could find about this uh, cap. And there's only some uh, molded uh, lines in it like this. So it looks like it's a press fit of some kind. Um, but I don't know if the diameter of the accumulators changed uh, with the uh, Febby Bilstein units, but eh, it's kind of strange. And uh, I'd like to uh, fix this before uh, bolting everything down, you know? I don't want this flopping around. So I'll try to look for uh, in a solution and uh, uh, report back. Okay, I figured out why the protection cap uh, won't fit uh, on the uh, Febby Bilstein unit. So. You can see the dimensions. Uh, let me move my light a bit. Yeah, you can see the dimensions. The length is correct. But look at the profile of uh, this curve, especially in this area, like this corner here. You can see that the BMW unit is more square, but the Febby Bilstein is rounder, um, probably to be compatible with more cars. Uh, that would be my guess. Um, but that means that it doesn't fit uh, with the the cap because um, if we look at the cap, you know it has these uh, you know uh, pretty well defined uh, ridges uh, inside the plastic cap, and um, it requires the profile to be the same uh, to get a tight fitment. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I really want to, to keep this cap because it's uh, you know specified by BMW, and I want to keep my car original. So, uh, yeah, I'll uh, put my thinking cap and uh, try to find a solution. So I think I found a reasonable compromise uh, to make the cap fit. Uh, I cut out these uh, small pads of neoprene, uh, or it might have been uh, EPDM foam. I forgot what it was, but uh, basically it's somewhat heat resistant and uh, it won't be directly over uh, the exhaust, uh, you know, further away. But uh, I think it's going to give enough uh, padding uh, to grab on the, on the cap uh, correctly. All right, so this is what it looks like. Uh, basically, it's just a friction fit and uh, it seems to work quite well. I even added one at the top there. So uh, three pads and uh, if I grab it like this and shake it, it's not moving at all. You know, even if I hit it, there's no vibration, no, uh, so it's not going to be a cause of uh, NVH. And I think the uh, thermal issues uh, are uh, pretty minimal um, because it's uh, not directly uh, over uh, the exhaust. So yeah, I'm really happy with this solution and I get to keep the uh, genuine uh, BMW um, part and uh, my car stays uh, stuck. Okay, so everything is bolted back and uh, listen to that. No more vibration, no floppy shield, no nothing. So uh, just as it was uh, from the factory, I'm really happy with that uh, solution. Okay, lower line reinstalled. Okay, now for the hose, I made sure that my threads are nice and clean. Yeah, it goes on pretty smooth. Wow, yeah, basically got it bottomed out, just finger tight. Okay, I won't go any further than that. So this is the part I wasn't looking forward to, installing uh, the hose with the damaged head. Um, hopefully it goes well. Really don't want to uh, replace this hose if I don't have to. All right, here goes nothing. I'll just do my best.
Okay, so far so good. It's going in pretty well. Of course, you have to wiggle the hose. Okay. I've done all I could by hand. So when I'm hitting these sides, my uh, my wrench won't go in all the way. So I have to use a an alternate uh, angle, like uh, at the top here. Yeah, see now it works. So this is what happens when you have damaged uh, sides on your uh, on your fitting. You have to be careful because you don't want to uh, make it worse. So I'm making sure that I have full engagement of the, the wrench before turning. And I don't want to go like this or like this, you know, I want to be straight in the center. Oh, I think I've hit bottom now. All right. Well, that went pretty well just by taking my time. And uh, seems like I've tightened it uh, the same as um, the right side of the car. Hopefully it doesn't leak and it works. Uh, let me know in the comment section uh, what, what you would have done. Uh, would you order a new hose right away and not try it? Um, or uh, use another solution? I'm curious to know what you would have done. So uh, let me know. Okay, so last night I finished uh, installing this uh, top hose. Everything went well. And uh, then uh, when I came back today, I noticed some oil uh, at the bottom here of this pipe. And, um, you know, it was connected and uh, bolted and everything, but I still could move uh, the, the pipe a bit uh, independent of the, of the fitting. So I wonder what was going on and I tightened it a bit more, but uh, it didn't uh, solve the leak. Uh, so I inspected the, the flare nut over here and I noticed that uh, some of the, the threads are crushed and I wonder what happened, but then I realized my mistake. So when I cleaned the threads, I used a, a uh, like I mentioned before, I used a Dremel to, uh, to clean the thread, but I must have used it too aggressive because I actually uh, ground down the, the threads so they are flat now and they won't grab correctly uh, the threads inside of the accumulator. So that was a, uh, a uh, not a great move from my part. Uh, it's uh, the first time I, I'm cleaning uh, threads like this and I did not realize how powerful a, a Dremel is with a steel uh, sort of a wool, uh, steel wool extension. Um, so next time I think I will use a Scotch-Brite or something uh, much uh, softer uh, to clean the rust. Um, so my, uh, my solution now is to file um, the threads using uh, this kind of tool. So it's, uh, it's part of my uh, thread chaser kit and uh, using uh, the um, 1.0 uh, uh, thread, I think it's a thread pitch, uh, or someone might correct me. So if I move it like this, I can, I can file the threads and then make them straight again. So I'll do that and then I should be able to uh, thread this by, by, you know, just by hand uh, because uh, even just with my fingers, I can't uh, even thread it into the hole here. I have to use a wrench. So uh, yeah, I'll clean it up, uh, fix it, and then uh, it should be good to go. Okay, so after about uh, 10 minutes of filing, uh, the threads are looking a lot better. Uh, I can't really see them that well from uh, over here, but they look less flat and more, uh, you know, sharper and more pointy. Okay, now if I try to thread the fitting before it would stop around here. Now I can turn it uh, much more and, uh, you know, just using uh, my fingers. So uh, I think that will solve the leak, uh, but I'll know for sure tomorrow when I leave this overnight and I can check tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident that this will, will fix my, uh, my leaks. So uh, yeah, uh, good job I cut this uh, before uh, uh, turning on the car and uh, getting a whole lot of pressure here. Okay, so as you can see, I put the wheels back on because uh, I left the, the hose connected overnight and there were no active leaks. Um, these are just uh, old stains, uh, nothing active uh, at the moment. So I will uh, drop the car and uh, turn the steering wheel left and right uh, to circulate the power steering fluid. I don't know if it circulates to the shocks uh, when you do that, but 
anyway, uh, that's what the Bentley manual says to do. And then I have to put a lot of weight into the back to adjust the, the level of the uh, pentocene into the reservoir. But uh, let's start by dropping it and uh, see how it goes. Well, after lowering the car, it didn't take long for uh, this uh, drop over here to show up. It's exactly uh, where the smaller uh, 11 millimeter uh, flare dot is. And uh, it's, it's uh, the same as uh, the, the left side. Uh, I damaged uh, the threads and uh, it just took longer to show. Uh, so yeah, I have to eject the car again, repair the thread and then uh, hope for the best. Okay, leak repaired. Uh, it was indeed the threads that were damaged, but uh, all is good now. And uh, I see uh, no leaks uh, in this area. And of course the cardboard never lies. Uh, you'll know right away if you have a leak, but uh, so far it's uh, perfectly dry. According to the Bentley manual, to set the correct level of uh, power steering fluid, which uh, as you know is also used in the uh, hydraulic uh, shocks at the back, uh, you need to load the, the trunk with 150 kilos or 332 pounds of weight. Uh, and here I have these uh, concrete blocks that we use for our uh, greenhouse uh, in the yard at the back. And uh, these are each uh, 30 pounds. So I got the 330 pounds here, I got 11 of these. Um, so I'll start the car now and the procedure is to uh, turn the steering wheel lock to lock three times and then to shut off uh, the engine. And then we need to get the rear wheels uh, off the ground uh, and wait two minutes. Uh, I guess this is for the fluid to circulate back into the reservoir or something. And then uh, after these two minutes, we check the level. Okay, so here is the reservoir and we can see that it's uh, much too low. Uh, and actually it used to be much lower than that before I raised the car for two minutes. Uh, so I guess the fluid went back into the reservoir somehow. Um, so you need to do this step, uh, otherwise you risk overfilling the system. I'm using uh, Pentocene CHF11S as specified on the cap. Uh, this is exactly what you need in this reservoir. And eventually I will do a, um, a full flush and uh, clean the filter and everything. Uh, but uh, that day is not today because uh, I just want to get this job done. And uh, I also need to replace two uh, lines near the steering column. And uh, yeah, I want to replace them today. All right, so the correct fluid level is uh, no more than an inch or 25 uh, millimeters uh, above the screen here of uh, the filter. So I got about uh, like a quarter of an inch and uh, I think that's uh, good enough. So uh, yeah, uh, now it's time to go on a test drive. All right, I got back from a test drive. Uh, I did not record it because it's a bit difficult to convey the sense of uh, ride quality uh, using a video format. Uh, but uh, trust me when I say that uh, it's a, a huge improvement. Uh, the car rides much better at the back. Uh, it no longer, um, no longer bounces uh, when I uh, pretty much hit any imperfections in the road or undulations and uh, now it just you know it, it, it bounces once and that's it and it's really compliant and it's uh, smooth so really I have nothing but uh, praise to say about these new accumulators. I saw no need to adjust uh, the regulating valve because uh, to me the the ride height is perfect uh, just as it is. The stance is uh, correct as well. I get a, a slight rake uh, at the front with the lowered front uh, using the eye back springs. And uh, to me, that's, you know, perfection and I uh, would not uh, change it. So um, yeah, it might differ on your car. Maybe you, you need to adjust it, but uh, so far I found that uh, it works uh, just fine as it is. So I thank you for watching uh, thanks for sticking around because uh, I know these videos are long. Uh, I like to share, you know, all the small details and uh, uh, little uh, issues that can uh, potentially arise um, and it makes the videos a bit long. But uh, thanks for sticking around and watching till the end. And uh, please subscribe if you aren't subscribed already. Uh, I have more uh, content on my E32 uh, to come in the future. And uh, also comment uh, below uh, to uh, offer some tips and insights uh, for the other viewers. So uh, have a good day and I will see you in my next video.